Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Bedtime Stories. Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. So what we will do is we'll choose a book that we're going to read just before we go to bed. Now before we start, have we all brushed our teeth? And are we comfortable and in our pyjamas? Is that a yes? Let's go. So I've got um, a few books with me today that we can choose from. So if we choose this one, brown bread and honey to start off with, and then if we have time and you're really good, I'll read another one to you. So let's go. Brown bread and honey. <clears throat> Brown bread and honey. The king was the most important person in the land. He lived in a big castle on top of a big hill. With his friends and the stable boy, he loved to jump, he loved to run, and he loved to ride his horse. The king gallops around on his toy horse. But what he loves the most of all is food. <clears throat> all day, every day, in the castle, the king's cooks cooked. Stirring and whirring, mixing and fixing, basting and tasting, sniffing and whiffing, sipping and dipping, making and baking, chopping and lopping, we stew and we brew. Lots of young, yummy things the king had to chew. We love cooking, yes we do. Until, a, until at last they made the king's dinner. There were milkshakes and muffins, puddings and pumpkins, chicken and chocolate, pavlova and picklets, curry and crodale, custard pies and ice cream cakes. As many yummy things as we can make. Bring more food, bring more food, bake, bake, bake. The king managed to eat it all up. But gradually, little by little, bit by bit, he got slower and slower and heavier and heavier until he was too slow to run, too tired to jump and too heavy for his poor horse. Nothing he did was fun anymore. The king was so miserable, nothing he ate tasted good anymore. As each splendid new dish reached the table, the king complained. He said, the curry is too hot. This gravy is too greasy. These muffins are too mushy. This, stiff, this stuffing is too sticky. The cooks walked off sadly. The cooks were sad and they tried harder and harder to make bigger and better dishes to please the king. Then one evening, after a big dinner of porky pie, peas, pudding and pavlova, the king was sick, very, very sick. There he is. I think he, he feels like he's going to be sick. He ate too much pie. He's growling and ooing. Now he was so miserable and so tired that he didn't want to eat another pie, pudding or pavlova ever again. It's all your fault. You're sacked, he said to the cooks. The cooks pack their bag and leave looking very, very sad. Now there were no cooks left in the castle. The next morning, 
the king felt a little better and wanted some breakfast. He asked the maid who cleaned the kitchen, Can you cook? The maid had heard him complaining about the curry and she remembered what had happened to the cooks. Shaking her head, No, I can't, she said. Then he asked the gardener who grew the gardens. Can you cook? But the gardener had heard him grizzling about the gravy. Shaking his head, no, I can't, he said. Then the king asked the minister in charge of the money. Can you cook? But the minister had heard him moaning about the muffins. Shaking his head, he said, no, I can't. Then he asked the soldier who served as the sentry, can you cook? But the soldier had heard him screeching about the stuffings. The soldier replied, no, I can't. When there was no one left to ask, the king sat down just where he was and cried. He was sobbing and booing. He was still sitting there the next day when the stable boy found him. The stable boy holds out the lunch his mother had made him and offers it to the king. Would you like some brown bread and honey, your majesty? Now the king had never tasted brown bread in his life. He stopped crying. He looked at it very carefully. The king sniffs the bread, but he didn't complain. Thank you. He takes a little bite. This is yummy. The king greedily gobbled up all the stable boy's lunch and was looking around for more. Do you have any more sandwiches? There isn't any more, that's all there is. I'm sorry, but I was so hungry, said the king. Each day from then on, the stable boy bought two lunches in two little boxes to the castle, one for the king and one for himself. And together they would sit under a shady tree and eat. They sit down and eat their sandwiches under the tree. Until at last the king could jump and run and ride his horse again. The king gallops around on his toy horse. <clears throat> this made the king very, very happy. Now he loves messing about in the castle kitchen and making meals with his friend, the stable boy. And do you know what they like best of all? Who knows? Brown bread and honey. Brown bread and honey is now the king's favorite food. There he is, jumping around in the kitchen with his new friend, the stable boy. So, lovely. I really enjoyed that story. I hope you enjoyed it too. So what was your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story was when the king was eating all the food and the chefs cooked for him delicious chicken and pavlova and muffins and chocolate. That was my favorite bit. What do you think we learned from the story? What happened to the king when he ate all the food? Well, he became really heavy and he became really slow. So what does that mean? If we overeat, sometimes we can eat our favorite food and 
just have more and more and more because it's our favourite. And then we, we become really slow and then we can become really heavy. So the king learned the hard way not to eat too much of his favourite foods. And I hope you don't do that too, like the king. Well, thank you for listening to the story. So I think we have more time to read another story. Thank you so much for sitting so patiently. And the second book we will read is called Do You Believe in Magic? Should we get started? Let's go. Do you believe in magic? Summed bought a she seashell back from his holiday. It's a magic shell. I found it on the beach at midnight. Linda held the shell to her ear. I can hear the sea, she cried. It's not the sea you can hear, said Miss Wicks. It's a lovely sea. Okay. <clears throat> it is, said Laurie. I can hear it breaking on the shore and crashing. Miss Wicks sighed. It sounds like a sea, but... Before she could explain, Sunita took the shell from Laurie. I can hear dolphins jumping in the sea, she said. Don't be silly, laughed Miss Wicks. You can't hear dolphins jump. You can, you can, Sunita insisted. They go chiff when they jump and they go chuff when they dive. Chiff and chuff. <laughs> Let me try, let me try, cried Peter. I can hear dolphins and fishermen, their oars splashing in the waves. Your ears are playing tricks on you, said Miss Wicks, wondering if class five were playing tricks on her. But I can hear them. I can hear them too, yelled Wilma. The waves, the boats and the fish. I can hear the birds. Just listen. Miss Wick smiled. No one can possibly hear that many sounds in a shell. Isn't it amazing she can hear so many different sounds? Wilma scold and hand it, handed the shell to Jit to. I can hear the sea, Dith said quietly, and the fish and the boats and the birds. I can hear the wind in the trees like those at home. It's true, said Charlene, putting the shell to her ear. There's the sea, the fish, the birds, the wind and the trees. I can hear dogs barking too. Nonsense, said Miss Wicks and she shook her head. There we go. Charlene is right, shouted Raymond. There are dogs and children, swimming and playing. There must be a little of my granny's village trapped in that shell, said Sumad. Holding to his ear, I can hear grown-ups working and singing. It's a lovely shell, said Miss Wicks, but there is nothing in it, chanted, <clears throat> but there is nothing in it, but there is, chanted class five, 
just listen, Miss Wicks. I don't need to, said Miss Wicks, dropping the shell in the fish tank. Poor Miss, Sam had whispered to Wilma. She should believe in magic. Oh, we've come to the end of the story now. I really enjoyed this story too. I hope you enjoyed it as well. So Miss Wicks didn't seem to believe them, did they? The children in class five had a very, very big imagination about what they could hear in the shell. Have you ever tried to put a shell next to your ear and listen to the sounds? Why don't you try when it's a really nice day why don't you go to the beach and see if you can find a shell and try and put it next to your ear and see what sounds you could hear in the shell. I think once I put a shell on my ear when I was um, younger and I went to the beach and I could hear the sea. Maybe you could try it and see what sounds you can hear. Thank you for joining me today for Bedtime Stories and I hope you really enjoyed the stories I read to you today because I really enjoyed them too. And I hope to see you again soon. I hope you've brushed your teeth and you're ready in your PJs and ready for bed. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum. Bye.